Hi, happy Friday. Welcome to this edition of Clean My Space Live. It's number 17. Uh, it is snowing. We are in the middle of a snowstorm. This weather could not be crazier. Um, everyone where I live in uh, the greater Toronto area in Canada is just so over the winter, even though we didn't have a major winter. But let me tell you, this storm rearing its little head today, no one's appreciating it. Um, two seconds before we went live, I was in a giant chunky turtleneck sweater and then I had to run upstairs and change into a t-shirt because I was sweating profusely because that's what happens this time of year. You just can't figure out what to wear for any occasion. Anyway, enough about fashion. Welcome to this week's live. I'm very excited because a really good friend of Clean My Space is here, Becky from Clean Mama. We're going to bring her on now. Um, Hey, Becky. Hey. hey, it's so good to see you. Great to see you. I mean, we saw each other before, but that's what you're <laughs> supposed to say when you go live and no one else knew that you were chatting behind the scenes. <laughs> so it's like great to see you for the first time. <laughs> um, but OK, so so just so the audience knows, um, Becky and I have been on the Internet talking about cleaning for a really long time, like when people are like, oh, you make YouTube videos about cleaning. Like, when did you start that? And I'm like, 2011. <laughs> They're like, wow, you've been doing this a long time. But Becky, you started doing your um, your content even before I did, didn't you? Yeah, 2009 is when I started. <laughs> yeah, you are an OG. And um, why don't you just give the audience a little history of who you are, what Clean Mama is all about, and then tell them what you did before Clean Mama, because I, I love that story. Yeah. Yeah, so I... I started Clean Mama in 2009 because I wanted to publicly share my uh, what I was just doing in my home and my routine and like how I cleaned my house and kept it clean for as long as I was doing it. I um, but I it was kind of a roundabout way of starting it because I never really intended to be on the internet. I really appreciated my privacy and, you know, just wanted to share little tidbits and tips and tricks and, you know, no big deal, but it kind of took off a little, <laughs> a little bit, you know, as the internet did. And um, I just continued to share what I love and talking about my cleaning routine and cleaning and um, DIY recipes and natural cleaning and just kind of my whole approach that way. So the way that I started though is interesting because I um, I was an art teacher. So that's like kind of a roundabout way of, I mean, it doesn't really necessarily correlate with clean, but because <laughs> there's a lot Only of making a mess. Yeah. Especially when you're an elementary art teacher. Um, and, but I really learned in that space and in that time how to clean quickly, clean with kids and how to like set and reset things. And I think that really set me up, no pun intended, for um, sharing cleaning tips um, on the internet. So, yeah. um, but I You're did, I've always really liked cleaning, which is kind of odd, but. Where we differ. <laughs> um, but I've, I've always liked cleaning and homekeeping and so much so that I used to clean my, um, like my teacher friends houses while <laughs> they like, cause I, I did not work full time. I worked like 90% my first year. And so I would leave early and go and I rotated through my, uh, the Dreadful. other teachers houses and cleaned them, which is <laughs> And I loved it because I just loved like cleaning houses. And it, it was interesting because I used their own, su their supplies. So I really kind of got to see like what products worked, how they work, their tools, all that. And I mean, that was like in 97, 98. I mean, this is like a long time yeah. ago. A long and time a really ago. odd thing for like a 22, 23 year old to enjoy doing. <laughs> Yeah. And the fact that you're admitting it here. And yeah. so you're, you're a mom to three. Yes. Yeah. I have three and, kids and a dog mom to two. Yes. Yeah. So yes. you, you understand us. Like, uh, yeah. You know, so we, we definitely and you're based, to... you're based in the Midwest. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, yeah. and, and like the cool thing about your business, um, I want to say the first place I stumbled across you was on Etsy mm -hmm. because what you were famous for were your checklists and your labels and your stickers. And like, yeah. that's how you built your business. And then you blew up on Pinterest and then you had your website and then you did your Instagram and then you had the homekeeping society and then your books and then, and then, and then, and then. <laughs> So yeah, you, you have an amazing business journey yeah, and products and oh, tools. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It's yeah. definitely, uh, um, an High adventures from Canada. um, journey. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's a journey. And, um, and I, and I was the first person to sell like printable products on or printable homekeeping products on Etsy. Like no one else was selling that. My husband was like, I can't believe, why would this, this doesn't make any sense. Like, don't even bother. Like, it makes no sense. To yeah. this day, to me, it makes no sense. Yeah, but it's, <laughs> here we know, are. <laughs> here we are. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hey, Brooke, good morning. So listen, um, hi, Renee. If you're here, let us know where you're from. You can throw some comments. Hey, Linda, Linda's here from Texas. You can throw some comments uh, in the description or description. Oh my God, I'm like in total YouTube creator mode right now. Write some comments in the chat. Let us know where you're from. Hey, Manga, um, or Magna, sorry. Nice to see you. Hey, Lisa. Um, oh, that's so nice. Thanks for your feedback there, Lisa. Um, it's so it's so nice to see people here in the live. You know, we put this together so that we can bring our friends and our community, people who we know and we've befriended to expose them to the Clean My Space community and help answer questions that people have. And, you know, Becky, you have such an interesting perspective. Hey, Nicole, um, that sort of like we are on the same page about a lot of things. And then we have differing opinions, like specifically with vacuums and appliances, um, <laughs> you know, like we have different thoughts and and ideas. But yeah, I always respect Becky's opinion. She's a true professional, tr true expert, and she's hella organized. So um, bring your questions. Hey, Deb, bring your questions, throw them in the comments. Hey, Hannah. Oh my gosh. Ne wow. Megan. Hey, everybody. <laughs> wow. Lots of people. Hey, Wisconsin. Uh, it looks like Thank there's, yeah, snowstorm in Wisconsin. <laughs> okay. So um, this is what's going to go down. First of all, every week we always talk about a Makers Clean sale. Uh, Makers Clean is our sister company that sells microfiber cleaning tools and more. And I will also say Becky sells products on her website. Becky, your website is? Shop.cleanmama.com. Or you can just go to cleanmama.com and click on the shop button. Yes. And you can see all of Becky's products they are beautifully curated. Um, they're super high quality, just like Clean My Space. So you can definitely go check that out. And Becky, after I say my piece, I'll give you an opportunity to say what you want to say um, about any of your products before we get to questions. Okay. Uh, so right now, even though it doesn't feel like spring, as I look and see a blizzard, um, there is a spring cleaning bundle. <laughs> <laughs> this weather that's on sale right now. You get a five pack of microfiber cleaning cloths and a free spray bottle. Uh, we also have a dusting sale word up to the dusting sale, 25% off the original makers, cleaning cloths, makers, minis, and our dusting mitts. So that's a great offer. Uh, Becky, anything going on on your website before we get into, uh, any cues? Yeah. If you join my email list, you can, you'll get a 15% off coupon. I do have a sale today that ends today. That's buy one, get one free paper goods. And the code is BOGO paper. Nice. So if you're interested. Okay, great. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, Becky and I are going to go back and forth answering your questions. So remember, if you have any questions, throw them in the chat and uh, we will take them. And if you want Becky to answer a question or me to answer a question, just shout us out in there. Otherwise, we'll just flip flop answering them. All right. So I'm going to start off with a question here from Jill. P, it says, what kind of spray do you use around the toilets? So there's two approaches you can take. Um, approach number one is just using an all-purpose cleaner, which is what I tend to use. And I would make mine two cups of water, um, half teaspoon of dish soap. I'm very comfortable using that. And I always say to people, like, I have yet to die from, you know, using soap and water for cleaning. Like, soap is designed 
to do just that, to clean. Um, but then you're going to have, you know, folks that want to use their special store-bought product that they really love, like a specific bathroom cleaner. And then you have folks that are adamant that they want to use a disinfecting cleaner as well. So you can sort of ramp it up or ramp it down as you choose. I feel perfectly fine and reasonable using that. Um, but Becky, I'll have you weigh in. What do you think? Yeah, I am on the lines of you where we're not over disinfecting things. When you are wiping down a surface, you are actually removing the germs. I'm fine with that. I do have two boys that share a bathroom. So I, I will say that I will spray their toilet like top to bottom down like at, at the base of the toilet, everything, clean it with the all purpose cleaner, but then I will spray uh, just hydrogen peroxide all over the, the toilet and the base too. Yeah. Um, I just put a sprayer on the hydrogen peroxide bottle yep. and do that, that, and you can do that. Like if someone's sick or, you know, whatever that's, but that's my go-to method. So it's like a two-step approach. If I, if I'm trying to like, disinfect. Disinfect. Yeah. And that's a great point. So um, whenever you're cleaning, there's, you know, just regular cleaning using soap and water, the scrubbing action of the tool that you're using tends to get rid of the dirt, the buildup and relatively speaking, the germs. But if you're trying to disinfect your two step approach would be to clean first, like I just talked about, and then to disinfect second, which is what Becky mentioned. So you can spray on your disinfectant of choice. She's using hydrogen peroxide. You can use a store bought disinfectant, um, but disinfectants won't work unless A, the surface is clean first, and B, it has had the opportunity to sit wet to do its job before it dries. So um, that was a wonderful question to kick things off with. Thanks, Jill. I'll take the next question. Uh, what's the best way to clean? This is from Kira Zen, and they say, what is the best play way to clean a large garbage bin? One of those big ones on rollers. So my favorite, and I'm this could either be for a large garbage bin that you have in your house, or it could be for a large garbage bin that you they take to the curb. Either one, this is what I would do, but I like sal suds. It's a product by Dr. Bronner's. It's a little bit more heavy duty. I'll squirt a little bit in, in the bin, add a little bit of water to the bottom, like hot water to the bottom, let that kind of soak a little bit. And then I'm kind of a baby about garbage cans, <laughs> but you can use like an old broom and you, I mean, if it's like a street kind of a garbage can, you could use an old broom and scrub the, the side walls of it and the base. And then I'll usually just have it, I'll drag my hose and my garbage bin like down towards the road and like, spray it out down there and let it sit Do it on spot. public space. Yes. Yeah. Public space <laughs> near the, the, um, sewer drain yeah. and <laughs> But sales says you can do that with it because it is yeah, biodegradable. Uh, like EPA safe and all that. So yeah. Um, Chad likes uh, uh, to take the pressure washer. So that's another great approach. Um, but yeah, definitely uh, one of the less exciting, as Marie Kondo would say, a job that definitely doesn't spark joy, but an important, <laughs> an important job nonetheless. But the finished want, result does. Yeah. Right? The, the, you're at, you cannot argue with the finished result. Okay. <laughs> We're on the same page about that. Okay. I want to make a comment here. Uh, this is from Lisa Taylor. I sort of flagged this earlier, but it's worth repeating. Uh, Lisa from UK here. Huge thanks to Melissa for advice last week, which I have to say was by way of cast from Clutterbug um, on wardrobes and wardrobe bullies. I was finally able to tackle it and five, oh, and bin five bags of donations slash rubbish. Yeah. I've done it. So I just want to bring this up. Um, Lisa asked a question last week about how to get rid of those clothes in your closet that kind of taunt you. You know, the ones where it's like, oh, those will fit me if I'm 10 pounds later or, oh, I spent X amount of dollars on them, but it doesn't really look good on me unless, you know, this changes or that changes. Anyway, so Cass from Clutterbug, who, Becky, I don't know if you know her or not, but she... Yeah. So she has this terminology where she calls those garments bullies. And she says that they're bullies in your closet, which is, it's a great way to approach it, right? Yeah. Like you look at that stuff and you're just like, those are, those are just making my life bad. You know, right. they, right. they have no place in my closet and it's cool. Like, you know, that terminology, obviously it just 
flipped a switch for Lisa. I know sometimes I look at things that flips a switch for me and it's just so much easier to yank something off of a hanger and say, I'm done with you. Um, and Lisa, I'm just, I'm so happy for you. And I hope your closet feels like a, a more approachable and, um, enjoyable space for you to be in. So congratulations. Great work. That's awesome. I'll take the next question from Sammy. Do you have a chart or reminder system to get everything cleaned when it needs to be? We'd love to hear all about that. I do. I have a whole routine. It's the clean mama routine. And it is, when you hear the word routine, you probably are thinking like regimented, super like rigid. I can't do that because I am too busy or I've got X, Y, Z. But I always talk about it being something that's more flexible and it actually frees up your time because now you're not thinking about what you have to clean and when you have to clean it. And I think that's freeing in and of itself. So um, if you were to go to my start here page, it will explain it a little bit, but I will give you like the brief rundown. There are four parts. <laughs> there are the daily tasks and the weekly tasks. And that's what I always say to start with, especially if you have not done a routine. And then there are rotating tasks. So those are those like, oh, you know, like the things that you know, you should, like the seasonal deep cleaning sorts of things like changing filters or cleaning vents, that kind of thing that no one wants to do. And you don't really remember when you did it last. This helps you keep track of that. And then I also have a monthly focus, which is more organizing based. So like for March, it's spring cleaning. April is going to be bathrooms, I believe. So, I mean, it, we kind of go through the house it, organizing different spaces um, that way too. So that is that. <laughs> yeah, Becky, you, um, your systems, you're amazing. Like your systems are amazing. They're so organized. And even on your Instagram, like you just keep people on pace. And I think that's one of the things that's so great about you. Like if someone's looking for a routine, Becky's like just great for consistency and motivation and you get straight to the point. Like you're a no BS kind of person, um, <laughs> but in that lovely Midwestern kind of way. <laughs> um, Nicole says, been watching your YouTube for over seven years. It's my first live with Melissa. Hey, Nicole, nice to see you. Welcome, welcome. Um, yeah, lives are always fun. You always get a bit of a different vibe. Um, Joanna says, when does this stop snowing in Canada? I'm from Texas. I think the technical, um, the technical, uh, month that we would say is July, but, uh, it's really? anyone's guess. No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> honestly, we, every now and then like April can become a wild month, but usually by March it's toast. Okay. Um, all right. And then sassy chick. Let me, let me get to a question. I was just looking at some comments there. Hello from Alberta. Any tips on storing big blankets? I tried just folding them um, in the closet, but then when I open the door, it's a blanket avalanche, which feels very on point given that it's snowing right now. Okay. So yes, um, I have a couple ideas and then I'm going to uh, ask Becky as well, because I know this is something that I think Becky, you probably have a lot of experience with. So um, I really love those vacuum space saver bags. Uh, yeah, you're nodding your head. They're so good. Okay. Like they're just so good. Um, I find the Ziploc brand is, is really just worth the extra money. Like I've bought the Amazon ones. It's never quite work. The seals are never quite good. So spend the extra money, get the Ziploc bags. And they're like really big plastic bags. You roll up the blanket, you stuff them in there. Then you can like it has like a little, um, uh, like a little, oh my God, valve. Help. valve thank you. Yeah. yeah. My brain, it's sort of, my brain is sort of on a delay. So Becky, you'll just have to throw words to me every now and then. Um, it has a valve. So what you'll do is you'll sort of lift the rubber flap on the, the valve. You'll try to get the air out as best you can. Um, you can sit on it, you can punch it, whatever you feel is necessary. And then you can also use a vacuum um, to help suck the air out, which is very like gather the kids around. It's very entertaining to watch. Um, and it basically sucks all of the air out. So it makes it compact and easy to store. 
Uh, the one thing I will say is that you don't want to store it on a top shelf because if it still does fall down, it's quite heavy um, and dense. But you can find a safe space to keep it sort of in the basement or in cold storage because it will now be secure. The other thing you can look for are those polypropylene storage bags. Um, you won't be able to condense and get the air out, but it will give you the ability to kind of fold and cube and stack those larger items, uh, which might make it easier to store up high without having them fall out. Uh, Becky, what do you think? I use the uh, vacuum seal or vacuum, yeah, vacuum seal bags um, for that. I think they're great, especially for like larger bedding too. Um, I do for like blankets, like if we're talking like a throw blanket that maybe, you know, you're going to use, I have no problem having a basket or I have like a huge 15 gallon like vintage crock and I have blankets in there. Like sometimes okay. you can use your um, you know, if it's something that you use, like keep it out and have them accessible. We use a lot of blankets in our house, like yeah, at all different true. times. So it's kind of nice. Um, I would also say if you're not using those blankets, you can let them go. Like you don't, if it's like an avalanche kind of an effect and you would just be storing them to store them, but you're not really using them. I don't know. I would, I wouldn't hesitate to let it go. Yeah. <laughs> I love that response. All right. What's your question? So this is from MJ. Good morning. Looking for guidance on how to clean the strings for wood blinds, both the pull strings and the strings that keep the slats together. So this is, I'll give you two different ideas. So I'm, I'm thinking if you have wood blinds and they're like wood, wood, so they're brown and you've got the brown strings. So it all kind of is wood toned. That's going to show your dust and it might be faded a little bit too, just because of the nature of that material. I would use, I'd start with a vacuum cleaner with a good attachment. Um, you could, I would always like to, and that sort of a thing, I like to start with a brush attachment so that I'm getting the dust off of the slats of the blinds first. And then that way I'm not um, like carrying dust into those strings. And then it's not going to work as well to use that same attachment on the strings. I would use a nozzle attachment and just go down the blinds from top to bottom and to, to clean those. Um, and then see what that looks like. You can use that same method for the, I, I don't know if you have strings to keep the slats together. I'm thinking that's more of like a, a fabric tape. And so it's probably a little bit wider. Um, Again, I would probably use use your vacuum cleaner for that because I think, I don't know, I would just hesitate to use something different. But if they're white, you can use like a little bit of soap on that because then they're probably actually like you're showing the dirt more. So you'd use that same vacuuming method and then a little bit of soap on a clean white cloth so you're not transferring any anything to it. Um, so it'd be damp and you would just go with that down the strings. Um, I have seen people that you can take some of those apart and you can wash them. I would never recommend that. Because, for that and that would scare me. Yeah, it would scare me with the wood. Um, but Becky, would yeah. you use would you use a lint roller to do any of that? Yeah, yeah, you could. Um I would think that the vacuum cleaner is going to do a pretty good job, but if it's a wider tape, I think the lint roller might work better on that too. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So I like this question. Um, I have my response and then I wonder, I wonder what Becky's facial expression is going to be. So Lisa Taylor says, how long will homemade all purpose cleaner last before needing to empty it and fill it with fresh stuff? Well, Lisa, I don't know because I always use my knob faster <laughs> than it would ever expire. <laughs> so I'm usually making that bottle up once a week. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because I mean, we just take that spray bottle with us everywhere. It's like a gun in a holster mm -hmm. in an old... <laughs> Western yeah. movie. <laughs> that spray bottle goes everywhere. It's in the kitchen. It's in the bathrooms. Like, you know, Riley, we're, I, I, Becky, I can't ever imagine this happening in your house, but Riley eats in our living room and 
<laughs> and sometimes uses furniture as a napkin. Um, wow. with, yeah, it's a horrible, yeah, I'm just a bad mom, I know. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to encourage her, you know, not to do that. And I give her napkins and we have lots of mommy daughter conversations about it. But <laughs> I also just want to be a little bit flexible with her and, you know, show like, okay, nothing's too precious. But it is really freaking annoying when there's yogurt on the sofa. So um, yeah, all purpose cleaners coming out all the time. And I've, I've yet to ever um, have any of it last long enough for me to question whether or not it's still um, usable and fresh. That being said, we are just talking about water and detergent soap. So it, it shouldn't expire um, or, or turn. What do you think? So it could, I mean, I always recommend using filtered water so that you, cause that would be where it would turn. If you have, if you're just using like straight tap water, it's, there might be some bacteria in it. I mean, there's like some kind of a chance, like I, I have tested my cleaners and left Ooh. them for like, I mean, I've gone as long as a year on one. I mean, just cause I'm like truly curious and wanting yeah. to know what the answer is. I still have not had something go bad on me. So <laughs> how, what are you, um, how are you testing them? What's your method? So just like testing it from like, does it smell? Is there yeah. like any, I mean, I'm looking for like, like a sludge or a bacteria right. kind of a look to it. Yeah. Is it still, I mean, this isn't something I'm using like, Daily, because I've been talking about it for so long and sharing all these recipes like I like do kind of want to know like is this like if it went bad like in two days like I couldn't share it <laughs> or I'd have to at least let people know that but of course. My, I mine are gone like within like one to two weeks easily just yeah. from you know the state of using it that way so um but yeah I've tested <laughs> yeah Cool. Okay. Um, why don't you take the next question? Yeah. So this one's from Joanna. How do you organize very deep, but short shelves? The height can't be changed. What can I even store there? So this depends on like where the shelf is. Is it a bathroom shelf? Is it a kitchen shelf? Um, let's just assume that it's um, a kitchen shelf that's deep but short so you're having a hard time getting to the back of it because it's so deep but it's probably so i would look for some kind of an organizer that you can use that you can pull out so maybe it has a little handle on it and so you can put your things in there but then you can easily pull it out and access everything that's too deep for you to you know be like reaching around in with your hand every time. <laughs> um, but, oh, it is confirming that it's the kitchen. So um, thank you, Joanna. Uh, I think that the the other thing is I've like in, we have like a lazy Susan kind of the cabinet, you know, that corner cabinet that I would say would be like a deep, annoying shelf because you can't get to the back of it. But Interestingly enough, if you look, like you can usually find, especially now, like you can find a storage solution for just about any size yeah. <laughs> problem that you have. And so if you even search like the dimensions on Amazon, Container Store, whatever you want, wherever you want to shop, search the dimensions that you are trying to find and you'll find solutions for that. I also wonder, I mean, I know, I know shelf heights couldn't be changed, but like, is it possible to just restructure that entire unit and just take the shelves out altogether? Um, yeah. Cause that oh, sounds, sure. that sounds could, utterly you, obnoxious. You could have someone do that where they, I mean, they'd cut the shelves out probably, but then all you have to do is have, put the holes in and then you can have an adjustable and, and then adjustable shelves. Yeah. I wouldn't be able to do it, but I'm <laughs> yeah. like someone that like a little, someone that can do some construction, like light construction could do that for you. Yeah, totally. Oh, okay. So here's one from Ebony A. Um, how do you clean under a toilet seat? Mine has yellowed and I use a bleach spray and it seems to discolor it. Huh? Yellowing from bleach. Shocker. Huh. <laughs> yeah. Bleach, bleach can do that. Um, so 
in my experience, like plastic seats, wood seats, they can turn um, yellow and that can be permanent. Um, depending on the material, you have to be careful with what you're using to clean. That's why, I mean, I think Becky and I have very similar approaches in that we like to keep our products really simple um, because you can get very effective cleaners using something that's very simple. Um, that's also not going to cause harm to a finish. So I mean, I don't know what to tell you because I don't know if that's a problem that you can fix at this point. The good news is toilet seats are not that expensive. So if it really bugs you, um, you can replace it. Uh, and then what I would recommend is just stick with something that's simple keep away from the bleach. Um, you know, we talked about this right off the top. You don't have to worry about using something like a bleach on a toilet seat. Like you're going to be just fine without using bleach, um, and sitting on the toilet, like nothing is going to happen. You'll be okay. Um, and in the event that you need to use a disinfectant, there are disinfectant options available, um, that won't discolor. And this, this just goes back to sort of that general principle of, you know, know the finishes and fixtures in your home um, and then understand what products and tools can and can't be used so that you prolong their lives and how good they look. Um, yeah, Becky, like what, what, uh, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I would replace it. I would also, if you're replacing it, I would look for one that it has like a lift off kind of a like um, the snap off hinges. Pressure. So you can, I in, and I only have it in my boys' bathroom, but <laughs> luckily they're not watching. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I, you can actually just lift it, so you don't. It's not even there's. You don't even have the snap off tops. Oh, it's like a one. It's, it's like called a lift away seat, and so it oh. lifts up. And then you can clean under that. And then so moving forward, you're kind of taking care of that issue with a little bit of an easier to clean toilet seat. Right. You could try hydrogen peroxide that might help to lighten that up a little bit. Um, you could, I mean, you can make a paste with baking soda and hydrogen peroxide and leave it on there if you wanted to see if that kind of lifts it. I'm guessing it won't um, just, but yeah, that's. Yeah. It's something you could try. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So the next question is from Alexa. What is your recommendation to start spring cleaning? Where would you start your spring cleaning? So I love spring cleaning. Shocker. <laughs> <laughs> and I, uh, the reason I really like it is because it feels, it's kind of like when January hits and you want to like throw everything away and burn everything down. But it, it kind of has that same energy because it's spring. You want to open your windows. It's also probably what like dependent on where you live. Being in the Midwest, when I mean you go from winter to spring, it's very drastically different. It you want to clean, you want to dust things, you want to you know take care of that. So my recommendation is to start wherever you want to. I mean, you can start with a room. You can start, like if you want to spring clean your whole house, I have a plan for that on my free guides page. If you want to start with just your windows or choose one thing, you you can do th that too. Spring cleaning really differs. It's not necessary. Like, I mean, it, it isn't like something that everyone has to do, but it feels good. If your home needs it, like go for it. Like it's definitely a way to harness that spring energy and, you know, get some stuff done. What do you yeah. think? Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I think what's interesting about spring cleaning too, is that there are some religious components to it. Like I'm Jewish. We always, you know, there's a really big clean that has to happen ahead of Passover, which is a spring holiday, which is coming mm -hmm. up very soon. Um, right ahead of the Chinese new year, there's a lot of cleaning, um, kind of traditions that are involved as well, um, which usually have, it's not quite spring, but you know, late February. And I've done some research into this and there are just some different cultures around the world where spring cleaning holds significance. And I, I just always thought that that was really interesting. Yeah. Sort of like the out with the old, in with the new um, 
mentality. So yeah, you're right. Like wherever it, wherever it, the inspiration strikes you, um, <laughs> start there. All right, let's see. Okay. Uh, Connie P asks, can you recommend a really good vacuum cleaner? I can. And then of course I want to hear Becky's opinion because, um, I don't have the only opinion and you are in the presence of another really well-rounded expert here. So, um, so for me, like I'm a big, fan. <laughs> Becky and I are so different. I'm a really big fan of Dyson and I laugh because Becky and I have debated this off camera many times, <laughs> had these discussions. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I just find their technology to be great. Their products are reliable. Um, to me, they solve a lot of uh, problems that I have. And I think their cordless lineup, um, it's just, it's made a big difference. Like when I started, you know, everyone was talking about uprights versus canisters. I mean, that is just, that is just a dated conversation at this point. Everybody is talking about cordless, um, which I, I mean, I haven't used a plug in vacuum in many years because the cordless vacuums that are out now can handle, you know, large home capacities. They have, you know, excessively long battery lives. They have large bins, large heads, full size tools. So yeah, Dyson's really made some great strides in terms of providing that cordless um, experience, but with really great suction and um, air filtration. So yeah, I've had really great experience with Dyson for me. Um, the outsized lineup makes a lot of sense for our house, which is their, you know, larger cordless uh, products. Um, so we're using uh, a Gen 5 right now, um, which is their latest one, uh, the Gen 5 outsize. So yeah, that's the one that I love. They also have a V15 uh, submarine, which is, um, it has like a, a wet head as well. So it can mop your floors uh, as well as vacuum. So yeah, those are a couple that I really like. Um, Becky, what's your take? <laughs> well, I I think you should always like look for a vacuum cleaner that get the best one you can afford. And yeah. I think that that's like, it kind of differs, but you also have to have like a long game approach. If you are buying, I mean, so I came to my conclusion about vacuum cleaners after purchasing like three vacuum cleaners in two years and burning them out. And so that was kind of where I started thinking, okay, I've spent $200 on each of these machines. I could have bought something really good and I'd probably have it for longer. So I um, like, I, I like the Dyson. I think it's a great machine. I prefer a bagged vacuum cleaner. So that is kind of where we differ. I like the HEPA filter and then having a bag that all the dirt goes into instead of a canister. But you do have a cordless vacuum, right? I do. Here. I do right there. <laughs> yeah. So that's, yeah. So my favorite is the Mila. So that's my favorite brand. That's mm -hmm. their TriFlex, which my kids convinced me to buy. And it worked out well because I could test it and share it. But my kids use that one to vacuum. I use my Mila canister. So that's. Kind of and your dogs, they're, they're, they're short hair. They're, yeah, we have two Weimaraners. They're very short hair, very low shed. Like they don't have an undercoat or anything like that. So they're pretty low, like maintenance free kind of dogs. You don't have to really brush them or anything, but you know, there's, I do like to have that bagged, um, option for my vacuum cleaner. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, Definitely a difference. Yeah. Definitely but the dogs, like, there. I would love to do like a, um, like a robotic vacuum cleaner, but my dogs are like, they go crazy with it. Yeah. Like, yeah. You, they can't be in the house and it takes forever. And so I'm, I'm, it'd be nice if I could do it overnight while everyone's sleeping, but. That's the one thing they don't tell you about robot vacuums. Right, right. Like they're great to remove pet hair. They're just not great for the pets. Right. <laughs> um, all right. Why don't you take that uh, next question from Joanna? Yeah. So Joanna says or asks, what's your favorite cleaner for fabric you can't wash, wash such as upholstery? So it kind of depends on this. Like if you're just cleaning upholstery and you want to just wipe it down, I will usually use um, like a white cleaning cloth, dampen it, and then I will add just 
like a dot of um, Castile soap to that and then wipe that over the upholstery and then take a separate or I'll rinse out that cleaning cloth and I'll wipe over again to sort of like pseudo rinse it. Like that's kind of how I'll clean upholstery or I'll use a steam cleaner. Um, I like the Dupre Neat. It's like a box steam cleaner. They have an upholstery head on it that works great. Um, like if you have, need to sanitize something mm -hmm. that does a really good job with the steam, but you, you know, always like spot test that depending on what kind of upholstery you have. If you have leather, you can use like just that dot of, um, Castile soap is very gentle, but of course I would not use a steam cleaner and leather. Or yeah. And Dupre is a great brand. Yeah. Great call out there. Mm -hmm. um, and then C Mesa, you want to follow that one up with uh, that question as well? Yeah. What would you use to clean a pet accident on upholstered furniture that you can't remove to wash in the washer? So that would be like, I like, like you, you need to use some kind of an enzyme cleaner for those like pet messes or it will actually like draw out the dirt and remove that smell and it, it does a good job with that. I do, I've been recommending um, Back Out. It's by BioClean. BioClean. That's a great product. It's like a little bit limey scent. Um, yeah. I've used that for years with kid stuff or pet stuff and, um, and it's like safe and natural, but it actually works. They do have a good, really good carpet cleaner too, um, that you can put in your carpet machine. So if you are shampooing carpets and you don't want to use like a different brand, you want to use something that's like natural and low and low sudsing, um, their carpet cleaner is really good too. Another, another brand that's sort of really popped off on Amazon is called Rocco and Roxy for, for pet products. You've seen yeah. that one too. Yeah. 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 So I'm a really big fan of back out as well. Um, like BioClean is a really fantastic brand. Um, the only issue is that we have trouble getting our hands on it here in Canada. Huh. Um, yeah, I have like an underground connection with the actual company, which is how I get it. Um, but I do, you mentioned the scent is limey. Yeah. Um, and it, it it's, it's like this really pleasant lime citrus scent. Like some cleaning yeah. products I think have like, just like horrifying scents. Like you smell it sometimes and you're just like, Whoa. It's very but I, I actually found um, that smell to be really pleasant. So yeah, yeah, it's interesting that you mentioned that too. I thought I was the only one that noticed. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> so Sarah Vickle says, do you have a good method of getting sweat stains out of the underarms of clothing? Yeah, I do. This is, this is really easy. You just take baking soda um, and you wet it. You kind of make a paste. You apply it to the armpit area. You can add a little bit of hydrogen peroxide in lieu of water if you want. You just leave it. It sits overnight, dries. You throw it into the laundry the, the next morning. Um, Zach from Jeeves, New York, uh, Zach Posniak, who if you were on that live as well, he's a good friend of mine, um, a fourth generation dry cleaner. He taught me that the yellowing, like the sweat stains, is actually um, sweat oxidizing. So like when you cut an avocado, apple, banana, anything like that, it starts to turn brown. That is literally what's happening oh. with this. Yes, yeah, so gross. And <laughs> he's like, that's how to counter it. That's all you have to do. And I've been doing that for years, but then I always like, I love my experts. So I fact checked it with Zach and he confirmed that's the move. So um, give that a try. That should solve your problem immediately. Awesome. All right. So Bell Riot says, what's the best way to clean buildup on shower curtains without using strong chemical sprays? So I like to use uh, like a cloth shower curtain liner. You can find them. So it's like a non PVC shower curtain liner. They wash up really well. Um, but if you're trying to do like a PVC or like a plastic shower curtain, I always put those in with towels or I recommend putting them in with towels and washing that with the towel because then the towel will scrub the buildup on that plastic shower curtain. And then you, you might want to re-launder the towels, you know, kind of depending, you know, check them out, but you'll just hang it to dry. You obviously don't put it in the dryer because it would get melty, but that's, the towel will do a really good job kind of scrubbing that for you. Yeah. 
And it's so nice to get thank yous after. So that's why I was giving the thumbs up because people were putting in their thank yous. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So we have 15 minutes left. I'm going to see how much we can fire through here. I've got a question from Monica. Is it possible to wash the cyclone part of the Dyson vacuum? I wash the filters, but the cyclone part is still so dusty and retains a dog smell. Thank you. Okay. So um, I worry about people um, watching too many DIY cleaning videos on the internet. And I will tell you time and again, where I learn my information is from the manufacturers. So when I want to clean my vacuum, um, the cyclone is sort of the, the part where the filter and you know, all the technology exists. You're not going to dismantle that. You're not going to take that apart. Um, what you can do is you can get like little cleaning brushes. Um, apart from that, um, you know, as soon as you take it apart, you void warranties, you risk damage. If it's really bothering you, you actually can take it to a, a service center. You can contact Dyson. They will give you sort of their service center information. They can sort of do that type deep clean for you. Um, Generally speaking, if you're emptying your vacuum on a regular basis uh, and giving it a, you know, a decent thorough clean, it shouldn't retain odors for very long. Odors can also occur if any uh, moisture gets in there. So just be mindful of that. Um, but please don't go and watch some individual <laughs> ripping their vacuum apart and cleaning it. Um, I think that years. the other thing is like the dog smell, like that... I know that dog smell. Corn <laughs> chips, a little bit. What dog corn chips? Probably not in the cyclone part. It's probably in the tubing, or you know, or retained in that in the plastic of the of the um, dirt bin. So, but you, I mean, you could put just a. I don't know. Maybe you'll disagree with me, but you could put a couple drops of like lemon essential oil and put it in the. Um, receptacle for where the dirt goes yeah the and vacuum that way and that's going to yep. kind of at least give you a little bit of a freshness as you're vacuuming mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and kind of get rid of that musty yep. dog smell yeah definitely great recommendation a couple different things you can try there monica okay so peggy says i've used pumice stone on my toilet it seems to have scratched the bowl anything i can do about that so if you're using the pumice stone on the toilet, which is one of my, like my favorite method for getting those tough stains, but it's got to be wet. Like you cannot, you've got to make sure that the toilet bowl is wet. You've got to make sure that that pumice stone is wet. I recommend using like a Pumi, which is a brand or like, so not like the toilet, not, not the pumice stone that you'd find like in the beauty aisle, but an actual tool that you, is used and designed for toilets. So I would, you might have scratched it unfortunately, but if you, you make sure that you're using the, like a toilet scrubbing tool, wet it, see, you might be able to get some of that pumice stone off with the, the correct tool. If as long yeah. as everything's wet, wet on wet. <laughs> Scratches are not easy and sometimes not possible to repair, right. which is again, why we always say know your finishes and then choose your weapons wisely. Um, already, uh, is this, yeah, from Robles Nicole. Uh, okay, how to remove that musty, stuffy house smell? Oh my goodness, I have so many opinions on this. Okay, here we go. Well, I'm gonna crack my knuckles. Okay, <laughs> number one, <laughs> the best way to do that is to open your windows, just get a cross breeze going. Number two, air purifier get one upstairs, get one downstairs, or move it around the house. Air purifiers are designed specifically to help remove those stuffy, musty odors from the house. Number three, think about getting your ducts cleaned. When was the last time that was done? Number four, when was the last time you changed your furnace filter? That's something that should happen four times a year. Uh, number five, your soft surfaces in the house are the biggest contributor to that stuffy smell. So anything from your throw pillows to your blankets, um, chairs, sofas, bedding, carpets, all of that stuff are, they are sponges for odor causing, um, bacteria. So 
Becky mentioned a Dupre steam cleaner. Steam cleaners are great for that. Um, Febreze fabric refresher is something that you can use, although it's more of a, a their technology is a little different from just a scent cover up. Becky, Becky, I see you. I see you. I know, I know. Um, but it is good. It, it is designed to help trap odors, capture them, bring them down to the ground, and then you can vacuum them away. So that's a consideration as well. If you're someone who is like a product heavy type person, really, I think steam is the best. Laundering is the best, uh, dry cleaning, but it's those soft surfaces and lack of airflow and clean air systems that's contributing to that stuffy smell. hundred percent. Do, do you, you um, another thing, if you have pillows like on sofas that you can't launder or, or, or like the cushions or what you can put them in the dryer and fluff them up and, you know, get kind of get them moving and that, that will help to yep. that smell off of there. You could put, a couple drops of essential oil on wool dryer balls, let that sit and dry and then throw that in with the cushions or the pillows and yep. that can help to get rid of those smells too. Yeah. I have an LG styler, one of the, the steam closets, and it's great for, for that as well, okay. um, which I know is not something everyone has, but um, <laughs> yeah, it's really good for sort of that deodorizing um, thing. All right. Maybe. So, Laura says, what's the best way to clean your washing machine without using a fresh? So I like using white vinegar to clean the washing machine. Um, I also like my washing machine has a clean, um, like a clean um, tub cycle. So you don't even need to use anything. You can just push the button and it just cleans it with like the hot, hot water. Um, but if I'm using vinegar, I'm just putting like one to two cups in running the hottest cycle possible. And that, I mean, that's how I recommend doing it. And, but then also wiping it out too, when you're done so that you are cleaning, like you're not just running the cycle, you're actually cleaning the machine with your cleaning yeah. cloth, get in all those, like in the Groovy compartments, grooves. get in the, like the rubber gaskets and all that stuff too. So that you're cleaning it, cleaning it. Yes. Um, okay. We got a really great question from craft grandma. It says, Melissa and Becky question. What are your cleaning routines when cleaning with chicken? I'm so afraid of chicken. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, my, what my mom would say is become a vegetarian, um, <laughs> joke. She, my mom, poor lady, listen, this woman became vegan in 1988 or something crazy like that. When vegan was like, not a thing. She could only eat lettuce and potatoes um, oh my goodness. when we were at restaurants. Yeah, it was really bad. Um, and then, of course, the rest of us still ate meat. So even though she didn't eat meat, she still had to prepare. Anyway, very long story, total tangent. No one cares. Um, <laughs> when cooking with chicken, so this is, this is what I do. First of all, I kind of like, I think ahead. I'm like, all right, uh, if I need to do any prep, I like to do my veggie prep first. Mm -hmm because I don't like cross contamination. This is what you're worried about. So I would prep my veggies first. I use a wood cutting board for my veg. Um, and then I would have like a metal bowl that I would throw them in and I would sort of stick that off to the side. Then my wood cutting board goes away. I have a plastic cutting board that I use for chicken. Uh, the, the knife I'm not so concerned with, it's stainless steel. You can clean it with hot soapy water and it's fine. Um, so what I would then do is I kind of have a separate area where I do the chicken prep. I try to contain everything onto that one space. Um, and then once that's done, I, you know, try to take all the garbage, kind of wrap it up, put it away. I take all of my chickeny stuff. I put it in one sink cause we have two sinks in the kitchen, uh, do my cooking. And then while I'm doing my cooking, I will clean um, I try to use bristle brushes. I don't like to use sponges whenever I'm cleaning anything like that. Reason I like bristle brushes, like those nylon bristle brushes, because you can put them in the top rack of the dishwasher. Uh, put gloves on, hot soapy water, really good scrubbing. So that scrubbing action plus the soap is what's going to help to get rid of any of that harmful, concerning bacteria. Um, and then when you're cleaning the surfaces, that's when you're going to use the two-step cleaning method. So the first thing you would want to do is kind of wipe up or get rid of any of those spills. You're going to use paper towel to do this. 
um, and sort of just clean the surface with soapy water. Once that's done, then you're going to use your disinfectant, uh, whatever surface you have, making sure that it's safe for your surface of choice or the surface that you're cleaning. And the other thing I'll say is that not all disinfectants are food prep surface safe. So you have to make sure um, that you are choosing a disinfectant that is safe to use on food prep surfaces. Now, why is that important? Because I've worked with enough disinfectants and cleaning products over the years to know that many of them will recuse themselves from the kitchen. They don't want to go anywhere near your kitchen. So it's on you to pick one that is safe to be used in that space. Um, what's your routine, Becky? Pretty similar. I, I will usually take the shortcut at the butcher. Mm. <laughs> so um, I'll like if I can, I'll get the chicken already cut in cutlets or in like, like breast meat that's, you know, butterfly, um, butterfly, so that I'm not having to do that at home because I am like, I hate like working with raw meat. Just it's just like one of those heebie jeebie things for me. It has nothing to do. But I like to eat it, whatever. But yeah, um, <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I get it. I get so it. So I kind of have the, like I take my shortcuts from the butcher first, and then I will um, anything that I do with raw meat, I make sure it's I can put it in the dishwasher so that it's able because I have a sanitized cycle on that. So I'm making sure that it's not I don't know like the cutting board can go to the dishwasher the bowl, like everything can be washed in the dishwasher. And then I don't really worry about it that much. I actually will put it directly into the dishwasher instead of rinsing it in the sink because then that You're will- not spreading the bacteria in the right, sink. Right, right. Because your kitchen sink is dirty, like, dirtier than a toilet seat. It's so. the dirt, yeah, it's the dirtiest place in the house. That's where salmonella like just thrives. It survives yeah. and thrives and multiplies <laughs> um, in there. I do want to say we got a YouTube member. Um, there was a green, there we go, uh, Bell Riot. So this is a new thing that we just started doing. Candy too, thank you. Um, this is a new thing that we just started doing on YouTube. You can have these memberships. It's something we've been talking about for a long time. And it's just like, you know, when you listen to podcasts and like, if you want to support the work that we're doing, um, become a member, it's like not expensive at all. And the idea is like, if enough people are supporting the channel just with these little memberships. It's just like an extra way for us to be able to throw additional resources behind the channel. Cause, um, you know, it's, 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 it's expensive. It's a big endeavor to do this kind of work. I mean, I know everyone thinks like, Oh, you make YouTube videos it must be so easy. Like it's a lot of work. We have a team of five, like it's, there's a lot that goes into this. So, um, thanks for becoming members. That is really, really special and so appreciate, so appreciated. Um, <sighs> Okie doke. Uh, Libby. Libby is, um, she watches a lot of our lives. So let's see what her question is. Do I need to wash my clothes on the sanitized, sanitized cycle? I have nine cats and two dogs. So um, here's the thing. I like it depends on the clothes that you're washing. If you love the clothes and you care about the clothes, the sanitized cycle is going to be really harsh on them. It's going to age the clothes, going to remove a lot of the dyes. It's going to be very um, stressful for the fabric. Will it get rid of odors? Will it do a better job at killing, you know, whatever bacteria germs are living in the clothes? Absolutely. So I'll leave it to you to decide um, knowing what you know now. Uh, if it were me, like, let's say I were in your situation, uh, like, I would kind of have my everyday clothes that I was fine to throw on the sanitize cycle. And then I would have kind of like my nicer going out special occasion clothes that I would wash gentler and I would try to interact with the animals less, um, you know, just to sort of be mindful um, about the clothing. So that's the approach I would take. And of course I would use a great quality laundry detergent. That's a, that's a good question. I think that the, um, maybe washing the, the pet stuff on sanitize is a, a good option too. And then not worrying about the other, but I don't think you need to wash your clothing on sanitize just because you have nine cats and two dogs. I mean, that's a lot, but if you, um, but washing their stuff on sanitize would probably yeah. be to get the odors and stuff out of there. Yeah. The other thing with sanitize is it's an expensive cycle to run. Yeah. For it's sure. long and it's hot. Costs a lot of money. 
<laughs> um, all right, Becky, you're going to take this last question here. Yeah. So Marty says what the best way to clean a fiberglass shower enclosure. So fiberglass is hard. I think from just the cleaning standpoint, there's a lot of different ways that you can clean it, but sometimes it can get scratched. It can collect like dirt in like little crevices, or if it has like a pattern to like a no slip bottom that tends to get gross and mm -hmm. grungy. So first things first, if this is a shower that you're using all the time, get in the habit of cleaning it weekly. It's going to make it so much easier once you deep clean it, but you're going to need to get it to deep clean it to kind of get started. So the way that I recommend deep cleaning it is to um, create like your own scrub in the shower. So you can spray it with an all purpose cleaner, you like a soap water mixture. You could just go straight to wetting the whole shower down. This is my preferred approach. Wet the whole thing down, sprinkle, like just douse it with a little bit of um, Castile soap, sprinkle baking soda, and then get a good scrub brush and just scrub it. Oh, <laughs> I mean, Although use a soft scrub brush on fiberglass so that you don't yes. scratch it. Yeah. Right. So it would, or you can also use like some of those, like, I don't know, like the wands that have the, like the scrubber, like the battery powered scrubbers. I mean, those will, those will do a good job too. So if you're, if you don't want to be like manually, manually scrubbing, if you don't want, if you don't want this happening. Right. <laughs> So I mean that would be you could you could take a shortcut. You could also use um, there are some like sponges with a long handle, you, like a, a soft sponge. You could use something like that. Yeah, um, sponge on a stick is the yeah, sponge on a stick that has a little bit of a scrub scrubbing, you know, spongy texture to it. That would work great too. But yeah, yeah. That, that's my preferred method. Yeah. I also find like one thing to know about fiberglass is there are specialty fiberglass cleaning products. Mm -hmm. So if you're struggling, um, I always say like if the DIY version isn't working well, you can always level up and find like a specific store bought. Um, one product that I use, we like, um, Riley, our daughter, her tub is a fiberglass tub. Um, and she whips her toys around in that bath. There's food coloring. It is like, it is a real adventure in that tub and things happen. So we use a product called Peek, P-E-E-K. It comes in what looks like a silver toothpaste tube. I want to say I got it at Home Depot. You can get it at any of those stores. Um, and you apply it sort of like a paste in a circular motion. You can use like a, like a microfiber cloth or a rag and it can remove stains. So let's say like one thing I know with fiberglass, aside from like the grittiness that sort of builds up, like you were saying, you know, on the textured bottom, which I've seen far too many times. Um, I'm talking specifically about stains. So like, you know, a scrape from a product or an item that you cannot clean out or even like nail polish. <laughs> like if you scratched your handle on the side of um, the tub, it can happen too. So a product like Peak would actually get that staining out. So I just wanted to share that because that was like a really special find um, for me. Huh. Is that Canadian yeah. or is it? Oh, actually <laughs> it's from the UK. Huh. I've never, yeah, I haven't heard of that. Use it. it has check. that special royal royal seal on it, you know? Yeah, like on appointment of the king, well, queen, king, royal, missing princess, whatever, the, whatever <laughs> have you, like whatever it is. Um, I do want to mention again. Oh yeah, look, I'm wearing a, such a royal shirt. Although I don't think it's this. Like this is this is saying like queen, like Becky, you're a queen, I'm a queen. This isn't like your highness. Anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> I do want to go back to this YouTube memberships thing because there are different levels it's really like it is so nice i i am really honored that people are signing up for this we were really nervous about ticking the box saying yes we'll take memberships um and it was sort of like a little corporate decision that we made and it is just it's so nice to see that people are actually signing up for memberships to support our work um yeah like the team and i work really hard thanks sarah um to put all this content out there for you um, and like, it just means so much. So you know what, consider it if you do great. If you don't, that's okay too. Um, I know some podcasts that I'm really obsessed with. I end up, um, supporting them as well. Cause I'm just like, you know what? You guys are awesome. 
Um, and I skip your damn ads, but I'll, <laughs> I'll support you. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, um, Becky, why don't you just remind people quickly where they can find you? Yeah, you can find me at, at Clean Mama on socials. And then my website is cleanmama.com. And um, like I said before, you, there's a uh, BOGO sale, buy one, get one free paper goods through today. So if you're interested. Yeah. And um, my gosh, Becky, it was so nice to have you on. And I'll remind everybody as, uh, else as well, uh, they can go over to the Maker's Clean website, which is where we have all of our premium microfiber cleaning tools and more. You will notice the fabulous hand model. That is me. Um, and you can find our sale items there. You do not need coupon codes today. We've got that uh, dusting sale, 25% off the original Maker's Cleaning Cloths, our Maker's Minis and our dusting mitt. Um, and then of course our spring cleaning bundle, uh, there is limited time remaining on that particular deal. It's a five pack of microfiber cloths and a free spray bottle. Uh, any other time you want to get a deal over on the Makers Clean website, you can just use the YouTube code YouTube 10 um, and you can save on all full price products there. Don't forget to tune in to our next live event. We usually do them Fridays around noon, but you know, I, we got to work around people's schedules, Becky. It just, it can't always happen. So <laughs> we try our best. But anyway, it was great to catch up with you. And Thanks I know so you much. and I will catch up off camera um, <laughs> at some point in the near future. Thanks guys. Everyone else have a Thanks. great weekend. And I hope it's not snowing where you are. I'll be, I'll be <laughs> dealing with the snow. Bye everyone. Take Bye -bye. care. Thank you.